In every neglected corner of the garden, weeds are quietly trying to tell us something. They're not just invading plants. They're messengers, revealing what your soil is missing or suffering from. When certain weeds show up in force, they're pointing to deeper problems below the surface. But here's the good news. These signs give you a clear starting point to heal your soil. And with the right layering of green material like alfalfa, rich compost, and straw mulch, you can turn compacted, lifeless ground into a worm-friendly, moisture-holding fertile bed teeming with life. Let's dive straight into the five key weeds that signal soil stress, and more importantly, what to do next to restore balance. If your garden is covered with plantain, you know, those flat, rosette-forming leaves that just hug the ground and seem impossible to pull, your soil is basically crying out about compaction. Plantain really thrives in tight, poorly aerated soil where roots just struggle to breathe. This kind of soil doesn't absorb water well and rain tends to run off instead of soaking in which is honestly not great for your plants. The quickest way to reverse compaction is to invite nature's tillers, earthworms, back into the soil. So you want to start by layering fresh green materials like chopped alfalfa or grass clippings directly over the affected area. This green layer feeds soil microbes and well kickstarts decomposition. Next, add a generous helping of compost to supply structure and nutrition. Top it all off with a blanket of straw or shredded leaves to protect the surface, retain moisture, and moderate temperature. Over the course of a few weeks, this layering system really softens hard pan and invites worms to tunnel and mix everything together. Spotted spurge is another common weed that reveals a different problem, low fertility. It thrives in barren soil with little organic matter or nutrient activity. If you're seeing spurge take over, chances are your beds are starved and in need of a biological reboot. The fix here is building up layers of organic wealth. Start by spreading a green manure layer, ideally freshly cut legumes like alfalfa or vetch, which offer a nitrogen boost as they decompose. Then add 2 to 3 inches of well-aged compost to inoculate your bed with microbial life. Finally, Cover it with straw mulch to hold moisture and keep weeds down while giving everything time to break down into a dark, spongy humus layer. As fertility improves, spurge won't stand a chance and your crops will love the change. Next, there's purslane, a succulent-looking weed that flourishes in overworked or sandy soils with low water-holding capacity. If it's popping up everywhere, it means your soil drains too quickly and lacks the kind of organic sponge that healthy gardens need. You can rebuild the sponge effect by stacking layers with a different moisture profile. Begin with green material like chopped comfrey, kitchen scraps, or alfalfa pellets, moisture-loving inputs that decompose fast. Follow that with rich compost made from kitchen waste or worm castings, then add a thick straw or leaf mold cover. This setup slows evaporation, absorbs rainfall like a sponge, and gradually transforms dry, lifeless dirt into a moisture-balanced growing medium. Another soil signal comes from the appearance of creeping buttercup. This weed dominates in heavy, wet soils, especially areas with poor drainage. Its presence often means your garden stays too wet for too long, suffocating beneficial roots and microbes. The fix is to add structure without drying the soil completely. Spread a layer of fresh green organic matter like lawn clippings or green trimmings. These high nitrogen materials generate mild heat during decomposition, improving soil aeration. Follow this with coarse compost to improve drainage while retaining nutrients. Then apply a final layer of straw or bark mulch to prevent surface compaction from rainfall. This three-part mulch system creates vertical layers that slowly dry the wet zones and draw earthworms up to help rebuild air pockets and flow. Lastly, if bindweed has taken hold, you're probably dealing with imbalanced or overly disturbed soil, often with a history of chemical use or, you know, years of shallow tilling. Bindweed roots deep and survives stress better than most crops. 
The path to recovery here isn't just about smothering the weed, it's about building deep, undisturbed fertility that, over time, outcompetes it. So start by chopping and dropping any existing biomass in place to mimic a natural mulch cycle. Add fresh green material like cover crop residue, layer in dense compost with microbial activity, and cover everything with straw or wood chips, and then, just walk away. This no-dig, layered approach kind of rewires your soil from the bottom up, making it way less hospitable to bindweed and much more supportive of the crops you actually want to grow. In all these cases, the common thread is a simple, repeatable practice. Layering green materials, compost, and straw in a way that mimics nature's forest floor. This method doesn't just fix the problem weeds, it restores moisture balance, fuels microbial activity, and brings back earthworms in droves. Worms tunnel through compacted zones, carry organic matter deep into the root zone, and leave behind castings that feed plants better than any bagged fertilizer. With this layered approach, even the worst weed-infested bed can become a rich, dark, living soil system. Remember, weeds are just the surface-level symptom. What you're really doing here is reading the language of your land and responding with action that heals from the ground up. When you see weeds as indicators, not enemies, you gain an edge that most gardeners miss. If this guide gave you a new perspective on weeds and soil repair, give the video a thumbs up and share it with a fellow gardener. For more hands-on, no-fluff strategies to build healthy beds, beat poor soil, and garden smarter, subscribe to Hydrohaven. We're here to help you grow better with less guesswork. See you in the next one.